Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Optimizing Image Heavy Applications. Uh, my name is Omar and I work at Garena. Uh, here is uh, my Twitter handle and uh, it's really nice to be back at iOS Conf. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've actually attended almost every iOS Conf since 2015 and it's a really wonderful experience and uh, really kudos to the team for organizing, especially to Sub. Uh, you guys work really, really hard at getting so many good speakers. Uh, it, it's pretty amazing. So uh, before we go into the talk itself, I want to quickly give a brief introduction about me. Um, so I work as an engineering lead uh, for this project called Booya. Booya is a uh, live streaming platform. So uh, it's a product of Garena. So it's uh, and and it's kind of, you can think of it as something similar to Twitch, but we're doing a lot more features, uh, primarily aimed at gaming audiences. And uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know about Garena, uh, Garena is a game publishing company. Uh, we've done published quite a few games. Uh, one of our big success games is called uh, Free Fire. Free Fire is if you guys haven't played it, do check it out. It's quite cool. Uh, and and uh, it's it's not that's just not not just me saying it. Uh, uh, it, it I think Free Fire won uh, top game in Google Play Store at least <laughs> uh, last for for last few years most downloaded game on Google Play Store uh, iOS App Store not 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 yet but we'll get there. Uh, so Garena is part of this uh, conglomerate called C. So, so actually C is the parent company and Garena is one of the companies under it. Uh, we also have other companies other sub companies might have heard of. So one of them is called Shopee. I'm sure you guys would have used Shopee or would have seen the ads. Uh, Shopee is our e-commerce platform. Uh, we also have this uh, financial services uh, platform called C Money. It's something that's still being developed quite actively. And if you guys obviously are interested and you guys know what this is, this is a hiring pitch. We're hiring. Uh, come join us. We are looking for iOS developers, but not only iOS developers. Any uh, software engineers all across the stack, whether you're interested in back-end systems, front-end systems, data, machine learning, testing, security, whatever. Uh, we are hiring across the board and feel free to approach me, hit me up. I would love to talk and learn more about you. All right. Now I'm going to go into the talk. So uh, first thing first, uh, let's start with an image. Right? So what exactly is an image when you think about an image, right? Um, so when I think of an image, first thing that comes to my mind, it's a file, right? So, so you can imagine uh, you have uh, picture1.jpg, right? And this is a, it's a file. It's a file on your file system. You click on it, you can open it in some application and you can, you can see this. So, so there is this notion that there's this concept, there's a file on disk uh, which represents that image, right? So there's this notion. Another notion of an image is it's also a buffer of pixels, right? So, so if you think about this from the display hardware's point of view, uh, because when you when you open your image, and it actually renders on display hardware. Display hardware only thinks of in terms of pixels, right? So there's if you think about how display hardware works, you have these uh, pixels, RGB values you need to know for each coordinate in your, for each pixel in your screen and I mean so so uh, an image is just a bitmap it's just like a, it's, well, or well, or in other words in this press in this uh, deck I'll call it a pixel buffer so so it's just a buffer of pixels right so and so so we have these two concepts one is there's a file representation of an image and there's the uh, visual or the pixel buffer uh, representation of an image that's kind of designed for this with display hardware and rendering in mind. So if you think about image rendering, it's important to understand the image rendering pipeline, right? So there's this concept, uh, uh, so, so there's this file related data. So it's gonna be in some encoded format normally. And we call this, a, let's call this a data buffer, right? So this data buffer, uh, let me just get my cursor out here. So, so this, this data buffer is, um, represents that encoded format, right? So, so for example, this could be JPEG, it could be PNG, it could be 
GIFs, it could be anything, right? Uh, so, so this data buffer uh, represents this, this encoded format. And this is not the visual format. And normally we do all kinds of tricks to compress it. So if you guys are familiar with JPEG compression, JPEG does a lot of interesting tricks. That's, it's, a, it's also a lossy compression algorithm, so you actually lose details. So if you uh, keep saving JPEGs that like reduce compression quality, eventually the quality will get worse and worse over time. And normally what you need to do is you need to decode it. So you have this data buffer and then you decode it into a pixel buffer. And the pixel buffer is actually just a bitmap or it's, it's basically just RGB values telling you, okay, this pixel has this RGB, this RGB value. It, it, this kind of maps directly to the display hardware. And uh, this entire process, right, is actually encapsulated by UI image. So when you create a UI image, let's say you create a UI image with data, for example, a UI image under the hood will do this decoding process. It will actually convert it will read the file or it will read with the data that you provide in memory or whatever form way you manage to get the data into the UI image object. It'll actually have a data buffer and it'll actually do decoding into a pixel buffer. And this entire process for us is just a high level abstraction that we call a constructor UI image and we're done. <laughs> but under the, under the hood, a lot of things are happening. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind here is when we're doing rendering, right? So let's say we have this UI image. What happens when we use it in a UI image view? Uh, well, the, if, if the UI image has already decoded it, it, decoded its pixel buffer, and normally by default, UI images will do this. When you, when you create them, they will, uh, they, they, will de they will basically keep this pixel buffer in memory. Well, the, timing may, the timing may depend. I'm not 100% sure if they do it lazily or if they do it uh, Im in, in, uh, immediately, uh, but when you render it definitely, at that time, you will definitely need a pixel buffer and that time, the pixel buffer will definitely be there. Uh, so and that that's how the, when you have a UI image view on, on your display hardware, it will actually render this pixel buffer over here, okay? So uh, something to keep in mind is that decoding is expensive. Right, so, so it's very CPU heavy. It's also very memory heavy. Uh, it's CPU heavy because you can understand it's, it's basically you're doing decompression, right? You need to implement this uh, codec, that this, this decoding algorithm that needs to decode from JPEG or whatever file format you're using uh, into uh, your pixel buffer. And this, I mean, there's a bunch of math involved here. It's, so it's, it, it is a very compute heavy process. Uh, it takes a takes some time to do. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, this is also quite memory heavy, and the reason for this is because it's CPU heavy. What tends to happen is we don't want to repeat this process again. And like any good computer science student, we like caching, right? So we'll cache this decoded output. And the problem, with, and something to keep in mind, like I mentioned just now, UI image will cache the decoded output. The pixel buffer will be cached. And this will cause a persistent large memory allocation. So what that means is once we allocate this memory and we have this UI image out in the wild, uh, even if it's not being rendered, but let's say you have someone pointing to it, it the, the pointer is there, it, it's got a reference count. I mean, that memory buffer, the pixel buffer will remain there. It's not gonna go away. And this will add memory pressure to your application. This is usually, I feel one of the primary reasons why our applications take a lot of memory, especially if they have a lot of image content. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, and this is quite important, is that pixel buffer sizes are proportional to the actual image size, not the view size. So even if you render a very small view, let's say just 20 by 20 pixels, but you're loading like a thousand, like a 1K by 1K image for it, the buffer size will be 1K by 1K as well, which is huge, right? So uh, just need to keep this point in mind. So your memory usage really depends on the source image. So if you're relying on user inputted provided images, for example, just keep this in mind that this is a wild factor. 
and, and this can have a big performance impact on your applications. And I mean, high memory usage isn't desirable for any application. And there are many reasons for this, but some of the main reasons are things like fragmentation. So, so your memory will be all over the place if you have a very large amount of buffers. You're gonna have a lot of cache misses, which is something that people, people don't appreciate that much, but it's a very fundamental thing that uh, L1, L2, L3 caches are much, much faster than reading from memory. And if your memory, is highly fragmented, it's all over the place, uh, you're gonna have more cache misses, this is gonna impact performance. It's gonna, you're gonna need more, uh, you're gonna, it's gonna be slower to do many, 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 many things. So your system overall will slow, to start slowing down. Now uh, there's also this other concept of memory compression. This is an interesting optimization that it happens in iOS where the system will try to compress your memory if it exceeds, if it becomes too large. Um, but the problem with this is this also has a performance cost. So, so it reduces memory usage, but it comes at a CPU cost. So this also kind of it reduces the amount of CPU you have for your workload. And ultimately, obviously, if you keep having higher and higher memory usage, you're gonna run into an out of memory exception. iOS will just tell you, no, I can't give you any more memory and it'll kill your process. So uh, these are important concepts that you do need to be familiar with and we should try to avoid them as good application developers. So uh, one very quick optimization that we can do here um, is we, like I mentioned, we often don't need the full image resolution. Normally when we are rendering thumbnails, for example, this is like a very common case, right? We only need a very small thumbnail of the original image. We don't actually need the full image. And this is, this obviously, can help a lot and you can imagine why, right? Because the pixel buffer sizes are based not on the rendering size, but on the original image size. Therefore, let's say you wanna do this kind of downsampling yourself in application layer. Let's say your server side doesn't provide any, by right, by right, in a good application, your server side or whatever image storage platform you're using, it should provide some kind of thumbnailing mechanism where when you, if you let's say users are uploading full time image, full image, thumb, image images, uh, you're able to generate thumbnails for them. And if you can do it on server side, this is obviously more efficient, right? But I mean, if you can't for whatever reason and you have to do it on client side, that's also okay. And iOS does support it. And I'm just gonna share some very quick snippets on how you can do this in iOS. Uh, so, so for example, if you wanna downsample an image, so this process of, generating a thumbnail from an original image is called downsampling. And this, and to do this in iOS, it's quite simple. There's two steps. So first step is you gotta use uh, this library from image, you got, this library called image.io. It's a more low level C library. And uh, they tried a bunch of very fancy methods to do a lot of this kind of complicated image.io magic. Uh, in this case, what we're doing is, <clears throat> the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna create what's called an image source and we pass it a bunch of options. The option that's very important for this example is we wanna disable uh, caching the decoded image <clears throat> because that's our goal here entirely is to control this, to have fine grained control so we never load the original decoded form in memory unless we have to. So, so that's why this key CG image source should cache should be false. That's what, exactly what it's controlling. So the first step is we create this image source with this option. <clears throat> and the second step is we find the max dimension. This could be the width or height, multiply by some scale. This could be your uh, screens, uh, resolution screens, rendering scale. And uh, then you basically do a downsample. So you need, for downsampling, you need to create, provide a bunch of options. So, so for example, enable thumbnails, whether we should cache the thumbnail, the thumbnail will transform, and provided the size, obviously. And once you provide these options, you can call this nice magic method, CG image create thumbnail at index. And this nice image IO method will actually do all the magic for you. It'll actually create a nice thumbnail for you. And you can actually, uh, this returns a CG image, so you can actually create a UI image from it. This is this is not that expensive. So, so yeah, that's the uh, process. And, 
I mean, this is not bad. It can work quite well. Uh, and it's just that, remember, it's not very cheap because you're doing some downsampling. You have to read the, read the image buffer, then you do downsample it. It's not going to be very cheap. Best if you can do it on server side. Uh, the, however, let's say you have a collection view where you're running, where you're rendering a ton of these kind of thumbnails, right? For example, something like the camera roll. Let's say you're working on some kind of camera roll application. This is like this iOS standard application we're all familiar with. So we have a lot of thumbnails here. And uh, something to remember here is a collection view and table view, uh, these cells render lazily. So they only render what they need to on that's actively being, being uh, in that that's actually in the window. <clears throat> and that's how they guarantee excellent performance, right? However, this also means that if you don't do anything, uh, when you scroll to the next page, you have to finish, you have to wait for all the downsampling for all these images to finish. And if you don't want to, to impact the user experience, you only have 16 milliseconds to do this. And this is very tight because um, this process, downsampling process is not, that, it's not that fast. It does require a fair amount of resources. So therefore, uh, um, you you probably don't if you do it if you do it by just you know, just do it in your main queue and you just do it in a blocking lazy way um, it it will probably won't be a good solution you need a better solution for this and uh, some very quick solutions are you can do prefetching and this is a very nice API they've added they've had it for some time now and uh, you can actually prefetch items at at a particular index path so this kind of collection we can give you some kind of hint that is coming here and you can do your uh, decoding earlier. And this, this, this is really nice because then the, the perceived impact is not, is not that high. Uh, another thing obviously that you should also, must also do because you don't want to block your main queue is you should do asynchronous downsampling. And the recommended strategy here is to use a serial queue uh, because you don't want to have a thread explosion with a concurrent queue. So a serial queue will do these one by one uh, and and uh, even though it's going to be, um, it, in, it, it needs to wait for each downsampling to finish, uh, overall, it's going to prevent uh, a crazy explosion of, of, of work where you keep, keep scheduling uh, work that actually doesn't, doesn't never finishes. So this is like the recommended approach for even using GCD. Uh, so, so yeah, you, so you can do something like this and this, this can help your main queue performance and will asynchronously update your thumbnail afterwards. Uh, some other additional notes to keep in mind is, firstly, uh, try to use UI image view when doing custom, instead of doing custom drawing. So, so, and this is because, as you can imagine, UI image view has a ton of internal optimizations specifically for images. Uh, the people in, people in Apple have worked pretty hard to optimize this a lot, so don't undo their optimization by not using it. So if you really have to do some custom drawing, let's say you have an image and you don't need to draw something on top of it, uh, try to use as many higher level abstractions as possible, try to use views. Um, the problem you run into if you do a lot of custom drawing is you need to deal with this thing called a, called the backing store and backing stores aren't that optimal. Uh, so so, so, so uh, try to use the highest level abstraction available. Generally, that's the advice for any iOS framework, right? So, so, so don't dig into the low level unless you really, really have to. Um, and, and there's no there's no choice, all right? Yeah, I think that that's pretty much it for this talk. Um, hope you guys like it. Feel free to ask me any questions. And thank you.